friends welcome to the channel physics by iitians we are back with another interview question and this question was asked in this year phd interview and the question is what will be the energy and momentum of a free particle what is the wave function of a free particle okay although the video can be lengthy but i request you to watch the full video to know lot more physics here so the for the classical particle the uh, free particle means there are no external potential or it is not in any potential okay it is free so the classical free particle is characterized by a fixed velocity v the momentum is given as p equals to mv and the kinetic energy will be e equals to half mv square that is p square by twice m where m is the mass of the particle and v is the velocity vector of the particle now what will be the quantum mechanical momentum and energy of the free particle we have to consider the de broglie relationship and de broglie relation p equals to h cross k and e equals to h cross omega okay so now potential energy apply here uh, and it the potential energy is zero here so the total energy e will be the kinetic energy so it will be have the same form as the classical physics and it will be e equals to t that is h cross square k square by twice m or equals to h cross omega so if you are to instructed to be pl to plot the uh, function energy versus uh, k e versus k graph so it is a parabola okay because e equals to what you have learned here that is e equals to h cross square k square by twice m so you plot e versus k you get parabola so you get this type of diagram where you can understand this this is a continuous energy there is no boundation of energy so that's why this is free energy continuum of free particle if you are write di write the diagram of the electron free electron energy or free particle energy you just write it or draw it with the continuous energy level or you can write it in terms of parabola okay now we will understand what should be the wave function of the free particle so the since it is free particle so vx that is potential energy is zero apply schrodinger equation write down the schrodinger equation we get that minus h cross square by twice m d2 psi dx2 equals to e psi okay now write it d2 psi, uh, d2 dx2 plus k square psi x equals to zero where k square equals to 2 me by h cross square is the wave number now the what will be the most general solution the most general solution will be the combination of two linearly independent plane waves where psi plus equals to e to the power i k x psi minus equals to e to the power minus i k x uh, or iota minus iota k x or psi k x you can write it as a plus e to the power iota k x plus a minus e to the power minus iota k x where we take we have taken a plus and a minus as arbitrary constant okay or if you write it with the time that is uh, time evolution you at factor the time factor then you can write psi k xt is a a plus a, a plus that is the amplitude along the positive x direction a plus and a minus is the amplitude along the negative x direction and this can be written as a plus e to the power iota kx minus omega t plus a minus e to the power minus iota kx plus omega t now you have a general question or you must question that why should we choose this why should we choose this kind of wave function why not in terms of cosine in terms of sine okay let's first find it out okay suppose we have a particle that is free particle having energy e and momentum p so e will be h cross omega p will be h cross k okay so plane waves suppose the plane waves is traveling along the positive x direction now we can uh, think of four solutions of the wave function one sine kx minus omega t another cos kx minus omega t third one exponential iota kx minus iota omega t that is always and e to the power minus iota omega t or fourth one it exponential minus iota kx plus iota omega t that is always and e to the power plus iota omega t function okay now we have to apply superposition and probability and the probability is probability of equally getting the right as well as the left the probability of propagation of the wave equally both possible at uh, uh, at the right direction or the left direction along the right direction or the left direction or along the positive x direction or the negative x direction okay we are taking one dimensional case now we have to superpose the waves one traveling along the positive x direction one traveling along the negative x direction so we are taking it as a sign of kx minus omega t representing the right 
direction wave and sine of kx plus omega t representing the left direction wave. Now this is the equal probability of moving. Now you, uh, you compute this uh, addition and you find out the answer is uh, or the resultant wave function is 2 sin kx cos omega t. But here, look here, this is not acceptable. Why? Because this wave vanishes at omega t equals to pi by 2, 3 pi by 2, 5 pi by 2 and so on. So, here, look here, the omega t value is giving us that the whole wave function is vanishing at some uh, instance. Okay. So, the par particle disappears as the wave function vanishes means the particle disappears. So, it cannot be a matter particle. Okay. Now, let us take the next combination that is the cosine wave combination. So, we take cos of kx minus omega t plus cos of kx plus omega t. So, we give, compute this and we get the answer as psi wave function psi equals to 2 cos kx cos omega t. Now, it has also the same problem that wave function will vanish cos omega at omega t equals to pi by 2, 3 pi by 2, 5 pi by 2, 7 pi by 2, so on. So, now take the combinations of the exponentials, okay. So, like the e to the power minus iota omega t will be here same, but exponential uh, e to the power iota kx and e to the power minus iota kx, okay. So, you take the combination that is e to the power iota kx minus iota omega t plus e to the power minus iota kx minus iota omega t. Now, we find out that e to the power iota kx plus e to the power minus iota kx into e to the power minus iota omega t. So, it is representing the wave function psi as 2 cos kx e to the power iota omega t and this iota e to the power iota omega t is the phase and it never vanishes for all x, okay, it will never vanish. So, the wave function behavior is better, okay. It is a better approximation. Similarly, if we take e to the power iota omega t and e to the power iota omega t, this term as constant, same, e to the, now we superpose e to the power minus iota kx and e to the power plus iota kx. So, what we will find, that is, we find out, it is also another well-behaved wave function, that is, it is also not vanishing for all x, okay. So, 2 cos kx and e to the power iota omega t is also a good choice or better cho choice. Now, if we superpose e to the power iota kx minus iota omega t plus e to the power minus iota kx plus iota omega t, what will happen? We have then again trouble because the wave function will also vanish at some time, okay? So, we have to choose any one of them, whether it is e to the power iota kx minus omega t or e to the power iota kx plus omega t and these are representing the plane wave and it is the matter wave or wave function for a particle with p equals to h cross k and e equals to h cross omega okay that's why we choose our wave function as let let me go to the page first that's why we choose our wave function that is psi k is the combination of the two that is a plus e to the power iota kx minus omega t plus a minus e to the power minus iota kx plus omega t okay so, you find out that omega is e by h cross that is h cross square k square e write this value divided by twice m into h cross. So, this is the e value and h cross is here as it is. Now, it will become omega equals to h cross, h cross k square by twice m. So, psi plus representing the wave that is traveling the right direction or plus x direction and psi minus is the wave that is representing the left direction or minus x direction. Now, we will find uh, what is the problem will be with this wave function uh, wave function behavior okay so we will find out the nature of the wave function now we have also uh, taken out that the p that is momentum is p plus or p minus that is plus minus h cross k that is the degenerate state it can be at plus it can be at minus I, I, mean, I mean it can be at positive x direction it can be at negative direct x direction at the same instant of time and energy is also e plus minus that is de degenerate this h cross square k square divided by twice m so these are the continuous states we have already uh, uh, stated the statement now what is the meaning of the continuous state the continuous state means there is no boundation on k and no boundation on e so it can be continuous but 
it is a serious problem with the finding out the probability what will happening here it is a direct consequence you will find out there is a direct consequence of heisenberg uncertainty principle you have no uncertainty in k no uncertainty in p so no uncertainty in e also what will happen the heisenberg uncertainty principle tells us if delta p equals to 0 then delta x should be infinite and if delta e equals to 0 then delta t will also be infinite how can we understand here look when we are going to find out the probability so we will have to find p plus minus that is the probability of the wave function that is mod of psi plus minus xt whole square and it is becoming mod of a plus minus whole square now this is a complete loss of information because this is independent of time or independent of function um, position of the wave function okay so it is the complete loss of information about its position and time okay and the another problem is when you find out the speed of the problem the plane wave so you find out the v wave that is the speed that is omega by k is omega you have to write it as e by h cross so e by h cross k so e you find out this e equals to h cross square k square by twice m divided by h cross k so you find it out as h cross k by twice m now classically find if, uh, v is classical v that is the position ve particle velocity that is p by m that is p is h cross k by m so h cross k by m is the particle velocity and wave velocity is h cross k by twice m so the particle velocity is twice of the wave velocity okay so the particle travels twice as fast as the wave that represented okay this is another problem with this kind of wave function what we have uh, taken now third wave third kind of uh, third problem is when we are going to normalize the wave function so we have to take minus infinity to plus infinity psi plus minus star xt psi plus minus xt dx now this is mod of a plus minus whole square integration of minus infinity to plus infinity dx and which is going to be infinity so it is not normal normalizable so it is an unphysical wave function so what should be the solution of the schrodinger equation that is physically acceptable and it cannot be plane wave okay it cannot be the superposition of plane waves along the positive x direction and along the negative x direction what we have to do we have to construct the solution by means of a linear superposition of plane waves and what is this this is a wave packet okay so how do you represent the wave packet wave packet here you don't have to write in terms of the summation there is an energy continuous and the wave packet you have to take all the superposition of all plane waves that are possible okay so you have to write it in terms of integration and the psi of xt will become 1 by root over 2 pi minus infinite to plus infinite integration over phi k exponential i or exponential iota kx minus omega t dk where phi k is the amplitude of the wave packet how do you represent the phi k phi k is 1 by root over 2 pi integration over minus infinity to plus infinity psi of x no, x um, comma 0 that is at t equals to 0 time exponential iota kx dx so momentum and position now he look here earlier momentum was confined or momentum value was um, uh, no uncertainty in the momentum value but here momentum value has certain uncertainty and position value has also certain and has also certain uncertainty so momentum and position both have uncertainties so only probabilistic outcomes are allowed what will be the group velocity of the wave the group velocity of the whole par uh, particle or whole wave packet is the particle velocity that is p by m and wave function is also normalizable so we should understand what is a wave packet look here this is the schematic diagram of a wave packet and the uh, the wave packet is a form of a wave function that has a well defined position as well as momentum thus wave packets tend to behave classically and are easy to visualize Na naturally neither the momentum nor the position is precisely defined as is governed by the uncertainty principle because it has certain momentum look here the spread in momentum and the spread in position so the uncertainty in momentum and uncertainty in position is always here present okay 
and this is suppose how can we construct the wave packet you have to take different waves different plane waves okay look here different psi 1 psi 2 psi 3 psi 4 psi 5 psi 6 psi 7 psi 8 and you are constructing this you are superposing this all psi and you are getting this is no, web packet. This is a web packet. So, what is the summary? The summary is a free particle cannot be represented by a single or monochromatic plane wave. It has to be represented by a web packet. And how does a free particle wave function signify a particle in space and momentum? The wave function usually represents a wave packet which is localized in space. Each wavelength represents a momentum. The average wavelength represents the momentum and the spread of wavelengths represents the uncertainty in momentum okay hopefully you understand the video uh, understand the content of the video if you find it is useful don't forget to like don't forget to comment and if you find our efforts helpful you can support by clicking on the, the link that is given in the description box and also share with your friends thank you